Hey, I'm Julia Hartley Brewer. Delighted to be joined right now uh, by Mo Metcalf Fisher. She's from the Countryside Alliance. They, of course, promote re uh, she's relating. Oh, he's sorry to the uh, countryside, uh, obviously, and obviously the biggest issue in the countryside right now, as we know, is of course uh, the inheritance tax that's being imposed for the first time on family farms, handed down 20% uh, tax uh, uh, on that uh, for any farm worth over a million quid. Uh, Mo, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you I, very much. I'm sure you didn't mean to misgender me there. I, I, do you know, I'm genuinely, do you know what? I actually said to my producer, I said, I said is Mo Man a woman? And they said a woman. And then and then they corrected me and said he. So I had actually, I do apologise, Mo. Um, I'm worry. sure you're, I'm sure you're identifying time. as whatever you are. That's what we do now, apparently. Uh, Mo, um, let's talk about the protest yesterday. I mean, look, peaceful protest, just a couple of tractors, only went on for a few hours. A lot of people, you know, very, you know, I mean, they're angry, but they were obviously civil and they were obeying the law and, and, and that's really important to keep the public on side. But there are already, you know, ongoing battles with, you know, Keir Starmer and with the uh, the Chancellor, Rachel Reeves, over how many farms are going to be hit and whether or not there's any possibility that the government is going to back down. What what do you make of the, the, the protests and do you think they will actually make any difference? I mean, it's a great question. I think it was absolutely important we all assembled in the way that we did. I think the five farmers, the family farmers who set that up uh, at quite short notice, um, did an absolutely amazing job bringing people together. And the point is, Julia, you know, that community, they're not career protesters, yeah. okay? For some of them to come into London yesterday was a huge deal. Some of them probably hadn't even been to London. Well, they're Caleb had only been a couple of farm. times with, Alec, with Jeremy Clarkson, hadn't he? <laughs> they're too busy working on the farm, feeding, yeah. uh, getting food uh, for us to eat. Um, and so, uh, you know, I was asked loads of questions about how many people do you think will be coming? And I said, look, if 500 of them turn up, that in itself is a significant number. Yeah. But to get the thousands of people that we did, admittedly they weren't all farmers, there was lots of other country people, uh, people from hospitality, yeah. uh, uh, as well as uh, town. Well, that, uh, that, that's interesting, we say, isn't people it? People, people, whose, people whose jobs depend on the farming uh, industry, the farming, you know, but also, crucially, people who aren't going to be affected by that inheritance tax, but still supporting the farmers who say they will. But the big debate seems to be still, I mean, you know, uh, almost a month after that, that announcement in the, in the budget, how many farmers are going to be affected? The government keeps saying it's only a very small percentage. Um, we know that the National Farmers Union and others are saying it's far more than that. And then, then there's some talk of, well, you know, a little bit of financial planning, go and see your accountant, they can sort that out, or you can gift away your farm. Um, as long as you don't die for the next seven years, you won't be affected by it. But, I mean, how are we, how are we us townies, who aren't dealing with it personally, how are we supposed to make or tell of who's telling the truth? Well, I've listened to the people that seem to know what they're actually talking about, which is the farming industry. At the end, if you're warning uh, those figures are wrong and that they have uh, figures that suggest a much higher number, I'd go with what they say. I wouldn't trust a treasurer on this at all. They seem to be all over the place. I mean, DEFRA's own figures were at 66 per cent. What on earth is going on? Well, apparently, DEFRA, the, the Environment Department, didn't even know about this tax going up until the day before the budget, having told farmers, the National Farmers Union, explicitly you know, that they would not be putting this tax up. But this is the thing. No one could agree how much, how many farms are going to be affected. How do they know how much money they're going to make out of this? Well, I mean, we, we were told yesterday, I don't know if you saw the front page of The Telegraph, but Rachel Rees is saying you need to pay towards the NHS. Yeah. Well, the suggestion there being that farmers actually do pay a lot of tax. They work incredibly hard uh, and they care about our NHS as much as anyone else. Um, but also the money raised from this tax goes to something like a day's worth of NHS spending. Yeah. I mean, she's just all over the place. and. Look, it's not about backing down and U-turning and causing political chaos. Just get round the table with the farming unions, work out what's going on, and let's rethink this policy before it's too late, because it isn't yet. Yeah, indeed. I mean, it, I, I can see this one running and running, and, there, and part of the issue there 
is uh, is is where does this protest go how does it develop does it does it move on any further because i think a lot of people obviously there were people who early on might have been supportive of like the just up oil and all of that i think the signature rebellion they started impacting uh you know ordinary people going about their daily lives now they were deliberately doing that to impact people they were making demands about the whole running of government uh, and, uh, and our economy uh, which people weren't willing to give in to but also they were breaking the law is it crucial that these protests stay within the law uh, absolutely. I mean, you, you saw great behaviour uh, yesterday. Uh, farmers are law-abiding people. Um, they know they've got the public on side with them uh, on this, uh, and that you know that, that that was reflected yesterday in terms of behaviour. But my my concern is is that an increasingly desperate community uh, does something that um, goes beyond uh, protest. I hope I hope that it doesn't get to that, um, but. What we're going to start to see probably is a lot more smaller scale protests pop up around the country, yeah. a bit of a revolt, I'd say. But let, let's not forget, Julia, you know, during the noughties, the early noughties over the hunting debate, it, it got so toxic for Labour in the countryside. Yeah. This is coming back now. This is how it feels. Well, and we well can... but there were some Labour MPs quoted today saying, look, you know, this lot don't vote for us anyway. Although, of course, we now got a hundred MPs who've got large parts of you know rural countryside in their constituencies, and who are obviously getting a little bit worried. Absolutely, and they they must feel they've been thrown under the bus here. I mean, what consultation did anyone have with them? But at the same time, Julia, you know, those MPs, those rural MPs that worked really hard campaigning uh, to win over the rural vote, they actually need to put their heads above the parapet and actually start making some noise. Our president, Baroness uh, Maliu, fantastic person. She gave a speech at the rally yesterday. She seems to be one of the only Labour voices that gets it, or that's at least willing to publicly speak out. Yeah. But Labour MPs need to stand up uh, for their rural constituents, particularly uh, if they have a countryside constituency now. OK, well, we shall see how this develops. Mo Metcalf-Fisher is External Affairs Director at the Countryside Alliance. Thank you so much for joining us.